Hey, welcome again, Pastor Jeff. Another daily word for today, capital W. Jesus, Yeshua, was, is, and always will be the eternal word, the truth, the way of life, including covenant. Look up the word covenant in, the, in Strong's or a, another concordance and go to the depth of it and look how the Lord has used the covenant. You know, I'm an attorney. I've been an attorney since 1966. And uh, I know a little about contracts. Covenant is even more remarkable because it's God-inspired. It's God's beautiful, perfect covenant. And there's incredible penalties for breaking the covenant. Just read that in uh, Deuteronomy. It's powerful. Those penalties are ex extraordinary. And we're beginning to experience them in these Western nations that have basically flaunted the covenant. God is not mocked. God is a, a loving God and a judging God at, like any good father. And it is his way or the highway, over the cliff highway. And I'm just grieved to watch the current leadership in my nation refuse to follow Second Corinthians or Second Chronicles seven fourteen, calling for a day of repentance. Those around him supposedly know that and talk about it on these prayer meetings, but no one has explained the power and the historical blessing that that provides. Ten earlier presidents. And because the truth was, this nation was not founded by men or women. Yes, there were some brave people who gave their lives, great heroes. Nonetheless, it was all by God's plan and miracles. The United States was never intended to be a secular nation. It was always to be set apart as a nation set like a light on a hill, a lantern on a hill. A, a place where we would give out the good news to other nations. And godly, righteous, humble servants would serve this republic where the people ruled in a godly environment. We don't have that now. There are sins of killing of innocence, sins of approving or sanctifying sexual perversions, sins of idolatry where it's now about self and money and uh, what we can do out of our own hands. And worse, the failure to follow the covenant of David, of the house of David, God's own game plan, which he gives us. It's spelled out in his word. We, we have a nation now that is not following his word. You tell me the last time you've heard any of the, quote, leaders of this nation start talking in scripture and giving any kind of credence and power to the one who has all authority in heaven and on earth, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. He says in Matthew 28, 18, all, that would be A-L-L, -L, authority has been given to me. This is the risen, risen Christ speaking to you and me. All authority in heaven and on earth, period. And yet we have, we have acted as if we're in charge. What a disaster. What a disaster. Pray for President Trump. Pray for other leaders of other, quote, West, Western nations, all nations on the planet, that those leaders would have a wake-up call before the nations go over the cliff. It's that serious. God is not mocked. His word is never <laughs> invalid. Um, and the tragedy is if you knew anything about American history, those very first founders were ecstatic that the Lord Jesus Christ, who had meant so much in their lives, was now number one in their public speaking. Samuel Adams said, cousin to John Adams, our future president, he said upon the signing of the Declaration of Independence, thank God 
Jesus is now our king. In other words, it was not King George III. It was the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Those earlier proclamations gave um, substance and power and truth to the gospel. They were proud to be a nation of born-again Christian believers. And that has been lost. We are now um, secular. So time is uh, quickly evaporating. It's late in the afternoon. What can you and I do? Repent individually. Start with yourself. I start with myself every day. I fall short. We all fall short of the glory of God. And there's no condemnation. There's no judgment. He's just saying, cleanse before my soon return as the bridegroom. You are the bride. You and I are part of the bride. And we have a movement in many nations now to have personal and then ideally national repentance. The last such one in the United States, 102 years ago, 1918, long before you and I were born. So, but we can begin with ourselves. And there is a blessing after repentance. I'm going to close with this truth. Joy follows repentance. This is not punishment, as old religious traditions would indicate. No, it's a gift. Repentance is a gift. It's a gift from God, just as the covenant is a gift from God. It's a good thing. It's a blessing to come underneath the covenant. Jesus says in, in um, Luke 22, whew, so powerful. Here we are at the Lord's Supper. He says in verse 15, Luke 22, 15, with fervent desire, I've desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I'll no longer eat of it until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this, divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, Look at this. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. What more could he have done? Therefore, how much more is it? the least we can do to clean up and get ready for his very soon return. Repentance is a gift. Spend an extra 10 minutes with the Lord in prayer today. Begin with any one of those on your list, because you and I both have a list of rebellion, of failing to follow the covenant, of being apathetic, of being politically lukewarm, of uh, being worldly, whatever, we all have our stuff. But the Lord will forgive each time we confess our sins. And then you and I have that opportunity to repent, turn 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Instead of being apathetic, you and I could have zeal to teach others the gift of repentance. Hope that blesses you. Until next time, Pastor Jeff.